If you assume that you are what you want to be, your desire is fulfilled, and in fulfillment all longing is neutralized. You cannot continue desiring what you have already realized. Your desire is not something you labor to fulfill. It is recognizing something you already possess. It is assuming the feeling of being that which you desire to be. Believing and being are one. The conceiver and his conception are one. Therefore, that which you conceive yourself to be can never be far off as even to be near, for nearness implies separation. If thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Being is the substance of things hoped, the evidence of things not yet seen. If you assume that you are what you want to be, then you will see others as they are related to your assumption. If, however, it is the good of others that you desire, then in meditation you must represent them to yourself as already being that which you desire them to be. It is through desire that you arise above your present sphere, and the road from longing to fulfillment is shortened as you experience in imagination what you would experience in the flesh were you already the embodiment of the ideal you desire to be. I have stated that man has at every moment of time the choice before him which of several futures he will encounter. But the question arises, how is that possible when the experiences of man awake in the three-dimensional world are predetermined, as his observation of an event before it occurs implies? This ability to change the future will be seen if we liken the experience of life on earth to this printed page. Man experiences events on earth singly and successively in the same way that you are now experiencing the words of this page. Imagine that every word on this page represents a single sensory impression. To get the context, to understand my meaning, you focus your vision on the first word of the upper left-hand corner and then move your focus across the page from left to right, letting it fall on the words singly and successively. By the time your eyes reach the last word on this page, you have extracted my meaning. Suppose, however... On looking at the page, with all the printed words their own equally present, you decided to rearrange them. You could, by rearranging them, tell an entirely different story. In fact, you could tell many different stories. A dream is nothing more than uncontrolled four-dimensional thinking or the rearrangement of both past and future sensory impressions. Man seldom dreams of events in the order in which he experiences them when awake. He usually dreams of two or more events which are separated in time, fused into a single sensory impression, or in his dream he so completely rearranges his single waking sensory impressions that he does not recognize them when he encounters them in his waking state. For example, I dreamed that I delivered a package to the restaurant in my apartment building. The hostess said to me, you, have, you can't have that here, whereupon the elevator operator gave me a few letters, and I thanked him for them. He, in turn, thanked me. At this point, the night elevator operator appeared and waved a greeting to me. The following day, as I left my apartment, I picked up a few letters which had been placed at my door, on my way down, I gave the day elevator operator a tip and thanked him for taking care of my mail, whereupon he thanked me for the tip. On my return home the, that day, I overheard a doorman say to a delivery man, You can't leave that there. As I was about to take the elevator up to my apartment, I was attracted by a familiar face in the restaurant, and as I looked in, the hostess greeted me with a smile. Late that night, I escorted my dinner guests to the elevator, and as I said goodbye to them, the night operator waved goodnight to me. By simply rearranging a few of the single sensory impressions I was destined to encounter, and by fusing two or more of them into single sensory impressions, I constructed a dream which differed quite a bit from my waking experience. 
When we have learned to control the movements of our attention in the fourth dimensional world, we shall be able to consciously create circumstances in the three-dimensional world. We learn this control through the waking dream, where our attention can be maintained without effort. For attention minus effort is indispensable to changing the future. We can, in a controlled waking dream, consciously construct an event which we desire to experience in the three-dimensional world. The sensory impressions we use to construct our waking dream are present realities displaced in time or the fourth-dimensional world. All that we do in constructing the waking dream is to select from the vast array of sensory impressions those which, when they are properly arranged, imply that we have realized our desire. With the dream clearly defined, we relax in a chair and induce a state of consciousness akin to sleep, a state which, although bordering on sleep, leaves us in conscious control of the movements of our attention. When we have achieved this state, we experience in imagination what we would experience in reality were this waking dream an objective fact. In applying the technique to change the future, it is important always to remember that the only thing which occupies the mind during the waking dream is the waking dream. The predetermined actions which implied the fulfillment of our desire. How the waking dream becomes physical fact is not our concern. Our acceptance of the waking dream as physical reality wills the means for its fulfillment. Let me again lay the foundation of changing the future, which is nothing more than a controlled waking dream. Number one, define your objective. Know definitely what you want. Number two, Construct an event which you believe in. No, construct an event which you believe you will encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. Something which will have the action of self predominant. An event which implies the fulfillment of your desire. Number three, immobilize the physical body and induce a state of consciousness akin to sleep. Then mentally feel yourself right into the proposed action, imagining all the while that you are actually performing the action here and now so that you experience in imagination what you would experience in the flesh were you now to realize your goal. Experience has convinced me that this is the perfect way to achieve my goal. However, my own many failures would convict me were I to imply that I have completely mastered the movement of my attention. I can, however, with the ancient teacher say, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize. And the next reading will be Power of Imagination.